Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode on the channel here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. And in the last episode we updated our UI here to surface the uh, corresponding, uh, let's see if we can change it real quick, our corresponding category at the, uh, I guess the, the, the top level here, right? So you can get a glimpse of what items are not only in what priority but also in which particular category. So I think that's just a nice little nice to have I guess from the user's perspective. So happy to get that done. If you missed it definitely go ahead and check it out. But in today's episode I think we're going to continue building off our idea of view state. Right? We've made uh, a few videos here talking about this section of the UI here with the category and how that's uh, has its own view state and basically turned into this data driven UI. Uh, I basically want to update the way this screen is laid out, or, or I guess the data layer behind this screen a little bit to also follow the view state because it'll set us up a whole lot easier for sorting, uh, filtering if we want to get into it, right? If we want to sort these by which ones are the oldest or the newest or by category or this default view, the priority or something along those lines. Um, you know, we, we can do so very easily. So if we take a quick look at our home epoxy controller, which is uh, what takes care of displaying this UI that we see here, uh, we can see that we get a list of items, which is the item with category entity for display. We have a little bit of business logic here to handle loading and empty states. And then here we do some logic to figure out, um, basically separate the UI into different sections here. Uh, based on priority. So it would be a complete mess if we were to try to overlay some kind of sorting or some kind of logic in here. Uh, and if we go ahead and take a look at how this uh, variable is being set, we can see here that our home fragment observes the item with category entities live data, and which is just fetched from our database, and then we just bubble that up to our controller we set the items and then we request our model build. And so then we just simply run this logic once and, and or every single time we want to, uh, or that we have something to update here and we end up with the same UI here. So it's not really all that flexible for the user. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this implementation here to handle a view state or to at least be fueled under the hood by a view state. And uh, we won't change any of the functionality yet, but we're just going to go ahead and change how we're presenting this data, where this logic is running, and uh, when I'm done with it, we'll talk about it. So enjoy the time lapse here.
Okay, so welcome back. Uh, to recap here, I have gone ahead and created a, well, let's start here with the data class itself, um, the home view state, which is going to encapsulate all the information that we need about the particular home screen. So we have a sort here, which we're going to end up using in the future, but we don't make use of at the moment. Uh, then we have a little flag for if we are loading or not. And then we have a data list and simply just a list of another object here that I've called data item. And that data item is generic. And so the data can be whatever type it needs to be. And then the header uh, Boolean here to just distinguish if a particular item is a header or not. Then uh, we've created the corresponding live data, mutable, private mutable live data and public live data instance to go ahead and just surface this information to the uh, fragment itself. And then a nice little function here. So we're still going to use flow to collect all of our item with category entities live data because that's been used elsewhere and, and has, a, has a purpose, I guess, at this moment. Uh, but we are also then at this point going to call update home view state, which will go ahead and run this logic, which based upon our current sort, which is just a variable that we have here, um, we <clears throat> will do something different, right? So if we're just in the none state, as in there's no sort, basically the default state that we, we had before on the screen, we just ran the same logic here. So basically copy and pasted this function from the epoxy controller, but just changed a little bit about it, uh, namely what we're doing. Instead of adding models to an epoxy controller, we're building the items accordingly. So we're building the header items when we should build the header items. And then otherwise we're building the data items when we should build the data items, adding them to a list, and then presenting that list in our home state to our live data, which is then going to be observed here in our home fragment, which very simply just goes ahead and presents the view state to our controller. And then here we've updated it a little bit. So the controller functions as it did, but we are working off of the view state instead of the multiple variables we had before. So now we have our loading state bundled inside of our view state. So we can check for that really quickly. We can check to see if our data list is empty or not. And then at this point, We've now simplified the true implementation of this epoxy controller here to simply just do what it should be doing, right? Previously, we were doing, we, we coupled this with business logic, right? A, a sorting logic, which the epoxy controller should not be responsible for sorting any of the data. It should be responsible for receiving data that it knows how to handle and then displaying that information based upon, you know, the, the fields or the data, whatever we have. So if we take a look at our new implementation, we loop over our data list here, and we simply say, if our item is a header, we add our header model, and we return. Otherwise, we're assuming that it is just a single entity you know, item, and we're gonna go ahead and cast that, and then add our item entity epoxy model. So I wanted to leave this here, but we can get rid of that. We got rid of this other function and moved it into the view model, so we no longer have to worry about that. And now if we take a look at our uh, epoxy controller here. It is much, much, much more simple in the sense that we just care about managing this. Um, this is all that we need to do. And then we have our, you know, epoxy models here, which really could be moved into their own files, but whatever, we'll just leave them here. But the important part is if we take a look at what this code is actually doing here, the code doesn't care anymore about you know, priority about understanding how to try to build different kinds of um, sections or whatever. No, it simply just loops over a list and says, if that item is of this type, we're gonna do this. Otherwise, we're gonna do this. So now we can feed this epoxy controller uh, any view state that we want that is formatted in any way that we want, namely, you know, based on the, uh, the sort order here, we're going to have maybe different headers or we're not going to have any headers or we're going to have, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll get into like collapsing headers or sticky headers or whatever the case is, but we can basically populate that information accordingly as long as it fits in the home view state, um, you know, uh, model itself. 
and then in here the actual display of the data is going to be taken care of by the epoxy controller. So I was rerunning this. Nice. Okay, so we, yes, very simple return at for each instead of return because we were returning from the entire function there. We can see here that the data has not, at least to the user, the data has not changed, right? Under the hood, we've made something a bit more flexible. We've made something so that we can now incorporate some logic in the correct location, the view model. And we will just have the view model spit out a different view state, and then it will be the epoxy controller's job to display that view state. So I think this is a perfect setup to uh, pick up in the next episode where we're going to go ahead and implement just a different sorting feature, a different way to see this data instead of high, medium, low. Maybe you want to see it by a particular uh, uh, category, maybe you want to see it by which items are oldest, which items are newest, or whatever else we can end up thinking about. So with this little refactor here, we've gone ahead and actually updated a, uh, our, our implementation, our data layer here, so that we can now very easily just manipulate the data we need to for the display, and then everything will look and function as the user expects without us having this major, major headache of having just you know logic all over the place. So if you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like. This was, uh, I think, a pretty productive video, and I will catch you in the next one where we're just going to go ahead and implement categories, or sorting, sorry.